This is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cavins. Well, if your question is whether or not Greg and I have a life, the answer is no, because it's the 4th of July, and here we are recording a podcast about the Patriots for you. It is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cattles, brought to you by FanDuel, our exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Sign up now at FanDuel.com slash Boston, where your first MLB bet gets you 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. Uh, just quickly, uh, I want to address something. Greg, I think, should be in a really good mood during this podcast uh, for the next, I don't know, let's just say foreseeable future, because uh, as I announced on Twitter, I am uh, no longer at Sacktown Sports in Sacramento. I'm heading back to New England. I'm heading back home. I'm heading back to our roots, personal reasons, family stuff. So it uh, hasn't been the uh, easiest time the last couple of months. And as you know, I, I had been off of this podcast a little bit for a time frame, and it had a lot to do with what was going on personally. Uh, but we're going to head back east. I can't wait to get back home. I'm excited for that. And uh, hopefully that will be happening in the next month, four to six weeks or so. And the reason why Greg is happy is not because I, I, I decided to you know leave my job with absolutely zero job to go to. It's because now Greg's schedule is a lot less strict and he doesn't have to worry about this whole West Coast, East Coast time. So wet blanket Bedard should be very, very happy and amenable the next uh, several podcasts. That's uh, that's that's amazing news. And uh, yeah, it should you, you should people should see the behind the scenes stuff that goes on us trying to coordinate East Coast and West Coast. Like I, you know, I got into sports writing because I was told there would be very little math. Um, <laughs> I'm good with the adding and maybe division and doing like the spreadsheet, but like doing the time zone and what time and what time does Nick think we're talking about? What times like uh, that'll be it'll be nice to have you back. Yeah, so if you're if you're in the media and you're hiring, especially if you're in the New England area, uh, I am going to be available very shortly. So uh, if you have anything in mind, do not hesitate to reach out. Also, uh, I know that the setup for the podcast has been a little less than optimal the last couple of months. But again, frankly, it's not really a top priority right now. Uh, top priority is try to get this podcast done with Greg to the best of my ability as we're trying to pack things up and move 3000 miles back to home. So uh, hopefully you can deal with some of that. Let, let's get into what we're going to do today, Greg. We're going to take a look at the AFC East. We're going to preview each team, our feelings going into training camp about where the Patriots are, you know, compared to everybody else in the division. And we're going to use the pro football folks, focus synopsis and, and the, the roster strength and all of that stuff. So let, let's start with the New York Jets. Obviously, they add Aaron Rodgers. That's a big time move. They were seven and ten last year. Their pro football focus roster ranking is seventh in the league. Uh, that's a little high to me, frankly, but that's that's what pro football focus has it as. They're they're seventh. So let's start with the biggest strength, Greg, this year for those New York Jets. Well, you know, PFS has their their biggest strength as the pass rush. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I haven't really thought about the Jets and pass rush. I mean, do I like some of their guys? Yeah, like I like Quinn and Williams. I like Jonathan Franklin Mar Myers. But the other guys like Lawson, Huff, Johnson, Clemens, you know, Will McDonald is a is a rookie, you know, who I like. But I don't know. I That's not where I – when I think of the Jets, I think of their secondary. Yeah. I mean, you know, when they can get out there and they can line up with Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed and, and Michael Carter is a decent nickel, like that's where the pass rush comes from. And it's sort of like, you know, the stuff that we've talked about with the Patriots. Like, I think that, um, you know, there's we always talk about there's a marriage between pass rush and, and covering. And if you cover really well, which I think the Jets do, it makes your pass rush look better and, and you know, vice versa. And so, you know, I think that the – I think that the Jets, I think their their secondary um, is, is their the best part of their game. Uh, I think they're a little bit weak at they're definitely weak at safety, um, but you know I also disagree with um, you know I, PFF says their biggest weakness is the offensive line. I don't love their offensive line. I think they have a they're sort of like the Patriots. They have the they're actually they're a lot like the Patriots. They have a potential to have a very good interior offensive line and tackle like. You know the Patriots are relying on Trent Brown, the 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 Jets are relying on Dwayne Brown, 
and you know you're trying to get uh Becton back in the mix he you know they named him as an X factor completely agree this is a guy when he's healthy and engaged and supposedly he's lost a bunch of weight and he's yeah you know blah 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 he has the potential to be the best left tackle in the game by far I mean that's how good the guy is and some of his snaps even as a rookie that's how good he was but you know when I look at the Jets and Nick I'll be interested to hear you know they the it's a nine and a half win total for the Jets I would probably go slightly over but when you know when I look at it you know I don't love the receiving core I love Garrett Wilson but Alan Lazard Nicole Hardman eh, you know and then you, you know you mix in the offensive line. Like, I think Rodgers, similar to when he was with the Packers, is going to do a, a lot of heavy lifting. And can he do that in the first year? Like, I feel much better about the Jets' defense than I do the offense. But, um, you know, I don't think they're they're far and away better than the Patriots right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'd, I'd probably go slightly over. I, I actually feel they're – a 10 win team likely when you look at all of the things that you mentioned, the pass rush. It, I agree with you. Quinn and Williams is a beast. He's an absolute beast. He had a terrific season a year ago. Uh, the guy is just an impact player up front, but sauce Gardner to me is this team's best football player. Uh, if he, if he continues to improve from where he was last year is his rookie season. He's a legitimate shutdown corner top guy in the league. You don't find many of those. He is what Patriots fans should be hoping in Christian Gonzalez. Even if you get 90% of what Sauce Gardner gave you yeah. uh, for the Jets last year, if the Patriots get that from Gonzalez, you feel really freaking good. So uh, uh, Sauce Gardner is their best football player to me. It all comes down to the offense uh, and, and Rodgers. And what what Rodgers are we going to see? Are we going to see the motivated Rodgers, chip on his shoulder Rodgers, somebody who is able and willing to lift the rest of the team up when he needs to? Because what we've seen is Rodgers is conservative, and he's never really thought that way. Not a, a lot of people in the national media talk about it. Greg, you've hit this a lot. I've talked about it as well over the last few years. He plays safe. He, he plays according to his passer rating. He, he doesn't try to, you know, zip it into tight windows all the time. He's, he's prone to not take risks downfield. And his mobility is not the same as it was, obviously, because he's close to 40 now. So, what level is Rodgers at? Is he going to be the screw you, I'm going to prove to the Packers that they suck and I'm going to be all world this season? And mentally, if he's thinking that way, can he physically follow that up? Can he be the guy physically that he was three, four years ago? It remains to be seen. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that he is going to be a bona fide top three quarterback this year because he showed up at mandatory mini camps and stuff like that. And he's been, you know... He's been a, a great teammate. It's the honeymoon. Everybody's kissing his ass. Everybody is telling you how great he is. He probably loves the situation in New York because he's got a bunch of young guys looking up to him. And I, I think he, he enjoys that. But it does come down to the quarterback play. Uh, I, I like Robert Sala. I think he's a steady head coach. I think he's really good defensive mind. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel like they're a 10-win team. I, I would agree Rick, with that. Uh I just wanted to follow up on Rodgers real quick because you know you you brought up a good point about Rodgers and and I saw something the other day and I'm sorry I I forget uh, who said it I think I was scrolling Twitter and you know one of those autoplay videos came up but s somebody was talking about um you know so Rodgers is in a similar spot that Peyton Manning was going to Denver that Tom Brady was going to Tampa um, those guys were largely successful Brady right away took Manning a couple of years but those guys were successful because they like you talked about chip on your shoulder but you know they they were all in and they like they did try to lift the boats of everybody I mean when you get in a situation like that Brady had to work his ass off to pull that um Tampa Bay team now you know I think some of that gets a little overrated because I do think that team had a lot of talent but I think at least in terms of the offense you know Brady had to do a lot of lifting of everybody and getting them to a new level Peyton Manning had to do the same thing had to work with Adam Gase to sort of bring his offense and meld the offense it takes a lot of work to do that and make this situation work is Aaron Rodgers going to put in the same amount of work around the clock 
in the off season during game week, like all that stuff, or is he going to be the Aaron Rodgers that I've largely known during his career, which is, uh, you know, he just, he just worries about number 12 or number eight now that he's wearing that. Like, he's just like, well, I'm going to do my job. It's up to, it's up to the coaches. It's up to the other players to do their job. It, you know, is he going to change? I, I don't think that works. And to me, that's the biggest question mark about the Jets going into the season. Is Aaron Rodgers going to lift everybody with not just his play on the field, but everything that's, that's vitally important from, you know, Monday to Sunday? He's also a different quarterback in style than those two guys. Those guys could rely on just hanging in the pocket. Not to say that Rodgers can't throw from the pocket. He obviously can. But Rodgers has always had the mobility to, to move around the pocket a little bit better than Manning and Brady, even though Brady was terrific at moving within the pocket and manipulating it. Rodgers has been able to, to utilize his mobility at times when those two other guys wouldn't be able to. And again, as he ages, he, he's not – as likely to do that. Uh, the rookie to watch, the one thing about the Jets we didn't hit is Joe Titman. I don't know him from a hole in the wall. I don't know if you have any <laughs> comments on that, but that's the uh, rookie to watch according to PFF. Uh, I, you know, a g- good player, but, um, you know, I worry about centers as rookies, especially, you know, you're going to have a rookie working with a 40 year old quarterback in terms of, you know, what he wants to do. That stuff takes time. But yeah. they, I mean, it, he's certainly better than Connor McGovern, who they used to have there. All right, let's jump next to the uh, Patriots. The Patriots are up next here. Uh, When you look at what they did, we all know, 8-9 and a year ago, the pro football focus roster strength is 18th in the league. So they're telling us that the Jets roster is at 7. The Patriots roster is at 18. Again, I think that's a little bit too bullish on the the Jets. I think the Patriots might be a little bit, you know, lower than I would anticipate, but not by much. I, I look at the Patriots kind of in the middle of the pack. So anywhere from 15 to 18 is is fair. I think the Jets are a little bit overrated by pro football focus. But, Greg, uh, the the PFF biggest strength this year is, is really following the narrative we've heard the last several weeks, which is this team's defense. Yeah. Let, uh, well, let's play a little game of let's go through these and, and give our own take. So PFF says biggest strength in 2023 – is the defense. I say, well, that's pretty general, but so I, I'm going to go their biggest strength um, is going to be the ability to mix and match at safety with, with different, different things. We've talked about it, Marte Mapu, yeah. Kyle Duggar, like, you know, just they, they, their ability to match up, I think is much better um, with different, offenses and different styles of offenses to me that's their big strength what about you versatility kind of goes in line with Mm -hmm. the amount of options at safety but I think they have a number of guys that can play different roles in this defense if they want them to they can deploy them in different ways which I think they will so the versatility kind of stands out to me um, on that on that side of the football I know you said last pod that you know people kind of overrate the idea of changing things pre-snap post-snap but the versatility is a big check mark for this team. Yeah. And, and I think we go back two or three years ago, that wasn't necessarily the case. You know, the, the more athleticism that they've brought into this uh, program, the better. So I would say their their biggest strength is going to be their their defensive versatility. Biggest weakness, Greg, PFF says wide receiver. Uh, I disagree. I think yeah. it's offensive tackle um, yep. by far. I mean, I, I don't really – I think they're – like we've said – even if they don't add DeAndre Hopkins, I th- still think they're decent enough between receiver and tight end, like the different, you know, whether you're running two tight ends and two receive or whatever, they have enough to make it work. I think it's clearly offensive tackle where as of today, considering the last time we saw Trent Brown and what kind of shape he was in, they don't have one good starting offensive tackle at left or right tackle. I agree with you. Offensive tackle scares the crap out of me. Uh, man, I hope Trent Brown comes back at training camp and looks like he's lost some weight. You brought up Makai Becton, the Jets. He's lost a, a ton of weight this offseason. And you would hope that Trent Brown sh- would have the same kind of urgency as Becton uh, for different reasons. Becton's trying to prove that he should remain in the league and be seen as a top tackle as a young guy. Trent Brown should be motivated by a contract that he can get. One guy showed up looking motivated. 
one guy showed up looking like he was waiting for the next sandwich and couldn't care less about what was happening. So hopefully Trent shows up in shape in a couple of weeks and we're seeing a different guy. But I agree with you. Offensive tackle is the biggest concern to me, and I, I don't think there's a close second. I think it's an obvious number one. They've got issues at both left and the right side. The X factor pro football focus says Mac Jones, Greg. Disagree. Um, look, I think, you know, Mac Jones, given a real offensive coordinator, um, we know what his, I think he has a pretty high floor. Like, you know, yeah. you, you know what you're going to get at the end of the day and he could be much better. So, you know, he's, he's, he's going to get them at, in and out of good plays. He's going to deliver the ball on time. Like I don't have, I, I don't, I don't worry about Mac Jones. To me, clearly the X factor in this season is Trent Brown. Like, you know, what kind of shape is he going to be in? How long is he going to be on the field? How is he going to play? Like, there's so many things that play off of that. Like, if he gives them a good representative play at left tackle, you can figure out right tackle. You know, put a tight end over there, chip, you know, spin the dial in terms of what you're doing. If you get good left tackle play, if he doesn't come through, you know, it's, it's going to be uphill sledding for the whole offense, you know, let alone what Mac Jones does. Yeah, I'll go a little outside the box as well. And I talked about this in a weird way. You might look at Ramondre Stevenson a little bit just because, you know, can he shoulder the load? Are the guys behind Stevenson ready to step up? Can Ty Montgomery stay healthy? Um, no, I was going to bring that name up too. Ty yeah, Montgomery. They, I mean, he could be. Yeah. So, I mean, you look at the wide receivers too with the, with the health, right? I mean, let, let's, let's paint the worst case scenario. If, you, if you're dealing with injuries at wide receiver all season long and you don't bring in DeAndre Hopkins, which I'm still hoping they do, but if you don't bring him in, you're going to rely a lot on this run game. And there's a lot of unproven dudes in that backfield. So Ramondre is going to have to be a 14, 1500 yard back, a guy that's going to be able to give you a ton of carries and a ton of touches. And last year, as I mentioned on, on the pod last week, he did slow down at the end of last year, and he was talking to the broadcast teams, you know, about three quarters of the way through about how he, he was feeling a little bit run down. He was a little bit tired. So I, I think, you know, if, if those receivers don't step up and stay healthy, all eyes are on the run game because then that will help also protect Mac and, and the offense. So Ramondre could be very big this season. Rookie to watch. This strikes me as, you know, the the old national perspective that hasn't been paying attention uh, every single solitary day because they list Kayshawn Booty as their rookie to watch. And uh, I guess he would be a rookie to watch to see if he could actually make the team or even the practice squad because all reports are, Greg, Kayshawn didn't really have a, a great showing a couple of weeks ago. No, there's there's not one reason on the field in what we've seen so far that leads you to believe that, you know, he's going to be their best rookie. It's much more likely from what we've seen that it's going to be Demario Douglas, who was drafted after him. You know, as far as rookie to watch for me, you know, I, I'll leave Christian Gonzalez for you, and I'm just going to – I'll stay in character. And, uh, you know, I'll go a little bit outside the box and say, you know, City So – at right tackle. I mean, you know, he could, if he pops and he hasn't yet, but he's young, he's a rookie, you know, what have you, there's a long ways to go. You know, if he pops and is sort of like a young Marcus Cannon type and can slot in there at right tackle, you know, he makes this team uh, a lot better. It makes me feel a lot better about the offensive line. So, you know, I I'm going to say city. So I like that. Well, we talked about the draft going back to that episode and you and I went back and forth on how we read certain things in that draft. And I had mentioned like my initial reaction when they picked three interior linemen, bing, bing, bing. I didn't like it at all. But then listening to the post draft comments from the team and, and you know, from Matt Grow, started to say, well, if, if City So can prove himself to be a tackle, then I really don't have a huge disagreement. Could they have tried to get a guy earlier? Sure. But we look at what they did, and I can't necessarily go crazy because some of those guys have looked pretty damn good. The Gonzalez pick was great. The guy I would pay attention to is Marte Mapu. That might be a little lazy on my part because there's been so much talk about him. But, Greg, right. if he can walk into this defense day one and make any kind of impact, he's precisely the kind of guy that you and I have talked about for the last several years. 
that this defense needed. They needed athleticism and they needed versatility at that second level. He could play second level. He can play third level. He's, you know, violent when it comes to hitting people. He, he's, he's a little bit as far as on the field style. He is different than Christian Gonzalez. The, the questions about Gonzalez, whether or not he's always willing to go downhill and smoke a dude like Marte is ready for that. So I think Marte Mapu is somebody that we can really pay attention to. Keon White, I, I kind of see as he might have some impact, but I'm really looking at him as a year two guy to kind of take that jump. He might be able to chip in this year, but he's more year two to me. Gonzalez is the easy one, the low-hanging fruit, first-round pick, drop to 17, all that stuff. If he plays to his potential, he's going to be a stud. But Mapu is interesting to me, and I, I also like the so thing. I really do. Uh, Over-under win total, 7.5 for PFF. I'm still in the same spot, so I got over at eight and nine right now, and that will um, the next time I will adjust that is right before the season over uh, opener, right after I get to see the team all training camp, after I get to see the preseason, watch the film, you know, then I'll have a better grasp of where this this team is. But for now, I'm I'm over at eight. I think seven and a half is low. Uh, you know, right now I could see nine. But much like you, you know, we, we approach things similarly, Greg, when it comes to, you know, prognosticating and our predictions, we, we tend to slow it down a little bit more versus some other people who want to go ham right away. They see mandatory minicamp and they're like, 12 win team. Absolutely. Settle down, pump the freaking brakes. So I, I think, you know, right now I'd say over seven and a half. I feel like they could get to nine. Let's see how things work out. Let's see if Trent Brown shows up in shape, yada, yada, yada. That could go up. Um, I just I have a really tough time seeing this team, you know, win seven games or less. I really do. They've got more talent this year. They are absolutely no doubt surefire going to be better coaching than last year. So I, I just find it it'd be tough if they if they won seven games, six or seven games, woof. That'd be that'd be a surprise to me. Tell the people about FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets, up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks. That's it, 20 bucks. And you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. I love those little bonus bets. <laughs> I just sprinkle them all over the place. That's 200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over under to who you think is going to be slug the first home run all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today at FanDuel.com slash Boston to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, we're about to get to uh, Miami, the Dolphins. I would like to bring up, though, when you look at the big picture, Pro Football Focus tells us that as far as roster strength goes, they believe that three of the top 10 teams in the league are in the AFC East. That's what they're telling us roster wise, because they had the Jets at seven. They have the Dolphins at 10. We'll get to the Bills in a minute, but obviously you could imagine the Bills are going to be better than both of those teams. So PFF is very, very big on the AFC East here as far as the top three go, three roster strengths in the top 10 throughout the league. So that speaks for itself. But Greg, we got the Dolphins nine and eight last year. Again, PFF says they have the uh, 10th strongest roster in the league. Biggest strength wide receiver. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, you know, they have just, you know, so many weapons all over the face uh, at place. I'm, I'm tempted to say Vic Fangio, Fangio who came on as, defensive coordinator i was just looking up some stuff on the dolphins like they were 24th in the league in scoring defense last year like you know fangio we talk about the impact that bill o'brien's going to have here and it's similar i mean the patriots offense was ranked about same spot 24th you know which coordinator is going to have a bigger impact um it's tough to compare offense to defense but i just think the world of fangio and i think that the, he's he's going to boost them but i would say yeah, the biggest strength is, you know, Tyreek Hill, Waddle, you know, all they got going on over there. It's just, you know, can they protect and can Tua stay healthy? Yeah, Josh Boyer. I remember, you know, previewing the games Oof. last year against the Dolphins. and he, uh, he would just send all these, like, pressure packages and be super aggressive at times, and not a lot of it made too much sense most of the time. So Fangio is a big upgrade. 
it's tough to argue wide receiver. Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, they got some beasts. They're explosive. They're yak machines. You go back to that first game against the Patriots last year, the biggest play at the end of the first half. Kyle Duggar took a, a bad angle. Next thing you know, Jalen Waddle's taking it to the house, and that's the difference maker. So they, they've got guys that um, can just absolutely destroy you if you're not disciplined on defense. Um, the biggest weakness, according to pro football focus, of this Miami team is their offensive line. So similar to the Jets, PFF's looking at that O-line. Yeah, I agree. I think their offensive line stinks and you know, I mean, they're, they're okay. But again, this is another AFC East team that's relying on an aging left tackle and Taron Armstead to sort of, you know, be the guy. And, you know, it's similar to the jets and the Patriots and uh, you know, it's it, yeah. I, I really worry about their offensive line. I, I like the Patriots interior much better. Um, but yeah, they're, they're risking a lot with this offensive line. And with the context, their quarterback situation, which we'll get into in a minute, you know, Tua Tungavailoa obviously has not been the healthiest guy. And there was talk, and he even admitted this, that at a certain point, they were having conversations within his family about whether or not he should continue to play the game of football because of the concussion issues he's had. And we've seen his head bounce off the turf multiple times. Obviously not good. And so when you put it into context, like Tua is not a supreme athlete. He's not a big guy. He has injury history and concussion issues. And you got an offensive line that have some questions. That's a dangerous combination to me. And to kind of go in line with that, PFF has Tua as the X factor for 2023. Um. Yeah, I mean that's that that's an easy way to go. I'm gonna go a little bit different direction. And I'm gonna say Jalen Ramsey. Uh, what version of Jalen Ramsey are they getting? Like Jalen Ramsey and uh, Xavier Howard, because Howard was awful last year. Um, if if Jalen Ramsey is still an elite number one and Howard goes back to where he was, you know you can make the argument that this is the best secondary in the game with Javon Holland at, at safety. Uh, Deshaun Elliott's also very good at the other. I love Cater Kohu, Cater Kohu, who was an undrafted kid last year and came on as a slot. Love that kid. Like, you know, they have, if Ramsey's the guy, they have the potential to be an awesome defense this year. So he's my biggest X factor. I like that. I like that a lot. I, I am going to pick the easy one, though. I'm going to go with Tua. I, I just think, and I know they they brought in Mike White. And Mike White had his moments, had his flashes uh, when he was with the Jets. But if, if Tua can't get through this season health-wise, I think that just changes the dynamic. And I think there are serious questions, and there, there should be serious questions about whether or not he can make it through a season. You go back to Alabama, he got hurt multiple times. He's never been a guy who's been able to stay healthy. And if you take Tua... Out of the you know out of, out of the scenario here, I do think you're looking at somewhat of a different football team, even though you have you know those skill players. Uh, so I, I would agree with PFF. Tua, that's where it all begins. If if he's if he's not healthy, if he's not good, I, I don't think this team wins more than you know eight or nine games. Uh, rookie to watch. Forgot how to pronounce his last name, but uh, Devin. It begins with an A. Is their X factor uh, for for rookies? Arcane. Yeah. Well, the Dolphins, it's uh, there aren't many to pick from because they only had they had second round pick Cam Smith, they had um, Devon Arcane out of Texas A and M, the speedy running back, and then they had a sixth and a seventh round pick. Um, I guess you got to go with Arcane. Uh, sorry, Act Act. Yeah, it's not. There's no R in there, you dumbass. Um, <laughs> a Connie, I think it's a Connie. Um, Really fast guy, so he's pretty much by default. Like, I don't think Cam Smith is going to play very much. Um, so, yeah, there's slim pickings there for them. All right. Uh, Over-under is nine and a half wins. What do you think? Oof. Again, I, I think a very accurate number. I guess today I'm going to go 10 wins. Uh, so, a slightly over. Sometimes we're just boring because we agree. I had him at 10 as well. All right, the Buffalo Bills. Uh, this team's interesting to me. They, they were 13-3 and three last year. Yes, 13-3 and three because, again, remember their 
Bengals game, Monday Night Football, DeMar Hamlin, that game was never played. So they ended up finishing with 16 games on the season, 13 and three. Pro Football Focus, Greg, says this team is a top five team in football. They have the fifth strongest roster, according to PFF. Uh, the biggest strength, this is a guy that has been very polarizing, especially for you. Josh Allen is their biggest strength. Yeah, there's no question about that. I mean, you know, we we buried that argument a few years ago at the, the tail end of that season, that second half against Tampa and what he did to finish that season. That's when he rose from really talented uh, player to an elite player. He's he's unbelievable, especially when he plays in check, which he has done yeah. alarmingly well against the Patriots. It must it must frustrate Bill Belichick so much. Like, dude, just throw us a ball. Like, do and he does do you know jackassery things sometimes against the Patriots. Like I think at the home game, I think he just dropped the ball at one point and gave it to the Patriots. But still, he just he's at he's gotten so good at being patient that he just sort of toys with the Patriots and he toys with a lot of teams. And so, yeah, I mean, he is, you know, you look at some of these, the, you know, you look at some of their roster, like fifth rated roster in the league. I, I don't know. I think the, I think the bills are overrated, but Josh Allen is no longer overrated. Hasn't been for a while. He's, he's immense. And it just depends on how much, ta- how much help he's going to have. Yeah, this is all relative, but, I do think Buffalo, I get the feeling they're going to take a slight step back this year. Yeah. And, and I thought that before the Stefan Diggs stuff happened a few weeks ago. I just feel like they're at that point, right? They're at that point of they're either going to really push this and get to the ultimate goal, or they're going to take that step back, and then we're going to see kind of a different Buffalo team moving forward. This is a really big season for them. That they don't want to just be the perennial, you know, runner up, perennial contender, but not ultimately get to the Super Bowl and prove that they're better than than the top in and, and the conference. So I, I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if they take that slight step back. The answer obviously is Josh Allen. We all agree on that. He is prone though, still, and we saw some of this last year. Yep. He's still prone to some of those gaffes. He's still prone to some of those bad decisions. And look, every quarterback is. Patrick Mahomes gets overlooked all the time. Yep. Patrick Mahomes, he's had a ton of should have been intercepted footballs dropped. And I'm not telling you Mahomes isn't great. He is, obviously. He's going to go down as one of the greatest of all time. But he also makes a lot of dangerous decisions. And he's been fortunate. Uh, a number of times. And I, I think Josh Allen, he still, he still puts his body on the line too much. He still tries to do too much at times. So there's some of that decision-making that could hurt you in big games. And he's got to take that next step where I, I don't want to say flawless because that's, you know, that's too much to ask, but there are those moments where you see, and there are those games that you see where he just, he, he doesn't make the right decisions or reads. He tries to do too much and he puts his team, in a tough spot. Biggest weakness, uh, PFF says, uh, receiver depth behind Stephon Diggs. I think it's the offensive line in general. I mean, I don't love their receiver depth, um, and and we'll get into how I think um, they can be a little bit better. I mean, you do think this is a tailor-made group for DeAndre Hopkins to walk into and make a lot better. I mean, you know, they have them as – you know, Stefan Diggs, Gabe Davis, who's wildly inconsistent, and then some dude named Deontay Hardy. I have no idea who that is. Um, but to me, it's it's the offensive line. Like, I like – Deion Dawkins is pretty good at left tackle. I think Co- Connor McGovern, the left guard, who I think used to be with the Jets, he stinks. Mitch Morris, the center, <laughs> he stinks. Ryan Bates, the right guard, he stinks. Spencer Brown at right tackle – Eh, I don't love him. I wouldn't say he's as bad as the other guys, but like, you know, t- you talk about the bills and the, or people talk about the bills and their lack of running game and stuff like that. You know, it's not the running back. They're always trying to bring in a new running back. Um, you know, talking about Dalvin cook. I mean, they have James cook. Who's good. It's because they can't block a lick up front. They can't move anybody, especially the better defenses that they play as they get further in the postseason. And like, you can't just, rely on Josh Allen to do everything and be your running game, which he was basically all of last season. I think he was their leading rusher, and it's because the offensive line stinks. And uh, so to me, uh, that's the part of their team that I see as their biggest weakness. 
Yeah, O-line's a big question. I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you. A surprise that DeAndre Hopkins isn't factoring into their decision-making at wide receiver, but I get it. You know, you already have some issues with Diggs. You bring in D-Hop, that might cause even more issue. You might be better off just uh, yeah, l- leaving that alone and, and, and not bringing in a guy who could be seen as the number one pass catcher if Diggs is having any kind of issue. Well, you got to uh, so, think like, like a guy like who who was it Khalil Shaker that they got last year. You got to yeah. think he's he, he you know if he takes a year or two leap like I loved him coming out in the draft. I wanted him for the Patriots. Like you know he could be a good you know number three, but it's really on Gabe Davis to like step up and be a legit number two and stop screwing around and and actually do it. X factor from Pro Football Focus for the Bills is Josh Allen. Your thoughts? No, I'm going with. <laughs> I mean, that's too easy. I mean, what do I expect him to be freaking Superman? To me, it's Dalton Kincaid, the tight end that they drafted mm. in the first round out of Utah. I'm pretty sure he's the he's the one who had the back injury in school or is coming off an injury. Um, yeah. You know, they already have Dawson Knox. And like Dalton Kincaid's sort of similar to Mike Gesicki in that he's – you know, more of a finesse, he, you know, he's pretty quick. He's faster than Gasecki, but he has the opportunity to be a big slot for them. So if he hits early, uh, he makes them a lot better and, and he makes that, that offense a lot more balanced. So to me, Dalton Kincaid, the rookie tight end is the X factor. The Knox Kincaid combo could be a very good one. If yep. Kincaid can stay healthy. I, I think Dawson Knox is underrated uh, for what he brings to the table. Uh, and you were right. It was a back injury. Greg that uh, Kincaid suffered in December. So he, he wasn't really part of the pre-draft process. And, uh, but I, I think many people believe that he was the best tight end in this class. If healthy X factor to me, I think they got to get more production out of their running back position. They, they've mm-hmm. never really had a consistent threat back there. And there's talk about maybe Dalvin cook, but they need to get more. Like you, if you look at their stats, their stats are always puffed up, like rushing yards and all that stuff. I think they were top ten in the league last year in rushing yards. Uh, but Josh Allen had 762 rushing yards last year. The year before, this is crazy. He ha- he had like 763. <laughs> if you look at his carries and his rushing yards, the last two years they're almost identical. They're getting close to 800 rushing yards from Allen. They, they've been incapable of, of finding the back that they can depend on that will consistently give them production week in and week out. And they've tried. They've taken swings in the draft. They took another swing in the draft last year. We'll see if it pays off. I, I just – they need a better run game. So we'll see if it happens. Uh, over under 10.5 wins, Greg. Uh, I'm going over, but slightly. I do, I do agree with you. I think the Bills um... – you know, are, are going to take a little bit of a step back. Um, you know, how much of an opening is, does that leave for the Patriots and the other teams in the division? But I think, you know, you get to the point, the 13 seconds against Kansas City, and then, you know, they were, they were building to a crescendo, and then, you know, it's 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 tough. It's like those old Bills teams, you know, in their Super Bowls. Like, it's, you know, it's it's tough to keep pushing – the the boulder up the mountain and and you know ha- having it fall over you again and I just think they're in a tough place it just you know, you're right with the dig stuff and like you know there's some contract resentment in the secondary and the safeties and like it just seems like you know it, it, and and you know there's a the whole thing with you know Sean McDermott and Colin plays and Leslie Frazier said you know that he didn't want to deal with it, so that's why he took off. Now McDermott's calling plays on defense. It just seems like this is really hanging on by a string in Buffalo, but they are so talented, and Josh Allen is just such a unicorn that it's tough to predict like the bottom's going to fall out. I mean, because they're yeah. they're that good in a bunch of spots. Yeah, it's tough to see them have, have a ten and seven season like that. Yeah, a, a slight step back from thirteen wins to maybe eleven feels more likely. Yep. Then, like you said, the bottom falling out, and they're an eight-win team, nine-win team. Josh Allen alone is going to win you nine, you know, eight or nine games, uh, if if not ten. So it, it's really you know the margins, thirteen to eleven, thirteen to twelve, maybe as far as wins. And I agree with you. The Leslie Frazier stuff has been overlooked by a lot of people. That's weird. It's just mm-hmm. Frazier's a very respected guy, um, and it, it's just strange how it all came about. They made it sound like he was retiring, but he's obviously not retiring. It's a strange situation. 
All right, before we uh, bounce, BSJ member question of the week, Greg. Uh, if you got one, we got a few minutes here before we uh, move on with our 4th of July. So what do you got for us? Anything? Yeah, so uh, Kurt N. Simon uh, asked me a question, and you know he's one of these guys who believes because, uh, yeah, the schedule's tougher, and and Bill, o but Bill O'Brien here, you know, if you base off of last year, you know, eight wins with what they had, they should be better. Of course, I disregard all that stuff. I think it's nonsense. We've talked about it before where, yes, they had eight wins, and yes, they were terrible on offense, but you also have to realize that seven of the wins came against backup quarterbacks. Is that going to happen again? Um, you know, how much better is the defense going to be? How good was it last year? How good was it has it been since 2019 against good offenses and especially down the stretch? So, but he did ask, I, I just wanted to clarify something. He said, he asked another question where he said, what is the upside case for Keon White in his rookie year? And I said uh, in my, this is in a BSJ member chat that I do every week uh, for our members. I said, I don't know what the upside for White is. Have to hope Wise gets hurt and White plays more. I don't know how much he's going to play. And somebody said, have to hope Wise gets hurt. Like, so <laughs> I, let me just clarify what I meant. Like if you have, high hopes for Keon White. And and look, I do think, you know, he has an exciting package of skills um, and impact and sort of suddenness and explosiveness that the Patriots don't have up front. Um, you know, but I just have a hard time, at least, you know, for a while um, of, I just don't know where he plays other than like a situational sub pass rusher um, to give somebody a, a, a breather. Um, you know, sort of like a, the Daniel Ekowale role, that sort of thing. When Barmore needs a breather, Ekowale goes in, Barmore needs a breather, Keon White goes in now. Okay, maybe he gives you something there. But as far as like real snaps, I mean, if 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 Lawrence Guy doesn't retire or doesn't show up, I just don't know where the snaps are because, you know, D Dietrich Wise is a captain type guy on this on this team. The Patriot, Bill Belichick loves him and – you know, plays him all the time and out of position has driven me crazy for years because I think he's a 4-3 end, but he keeps putting him inside and he gets washed out in the running game. And I do think Keon White can be better there at some point. But I just don't, unless Dietrich Wise gets injured, I have a hard time seeing Keon White get on the field very much this season. That's why I said earlier, I'm I'm more kind of hoping year two Keon White will be yeah. the push. This year, rotational, plug him in. He can help and impact, hopefully, at, at points. But really, year two, year three, I think, is, is where you want to look at for White to have that push on this roster to provide that impact on a weekly basis. I think he's going to be part of the equation here. I don't think he's going to be an overwhelming part of the equation for things that Greg just outlined. Uh, all right, everybody, enjoy your 4th of July episode brought to you by, of course, FanDuel, exclusive wagering of the CLNS Media Network. Sign up now at FanDuel.com slash Boston. And uh, your first MLB bet gets you 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. So enjoy that. Enjoy FanDuel. Enjoy your 4th of July. Be safe. Um, try not to blow off any digits with any fireworks. <laughs> you know, the things happen. Let's Let's be very protective of each other here. And uh, hydrate. Very important, very crucial part of your 4th of July is hydrating. So you want to do that as well. Uh, he's Greg. I'm Nick. I'm looking for a job if anybody's interested. Uh, I have some experience in real estate. I have some experience in healthcare. I don't want to do any of that. I would like to be doing media. So just keep an eye out on that. At Nick C. Ready on Twitter. Everybody be good. Greg and I will be back next week. Until then, be safe, be healthy, and enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself.